Hi, this is JP Morgan. Today on the Slanted Lands, we're taking our magic carpet, our Genie and our Genie Mini downtown to shoot some time lapse. We're going to combine time lapse with live action on this little set piece that I built behind me here. So Jolene's backing up right now to load up the set piece. So we're going to get that thing loaded up and go downtown and see what we can do. Sounds like she's here. Let's get loaded up. We are downtown Los Angeles. We came to the busiest, loudest place possible to shoot the lesson today. But the reason we did it is because we want to get the cars in the background in a time lapse. We're going to combine three things. A two axis move on our syrup slider, actually the magic carpet slider made by syrup. We're going to have the cars in the background in time lapse. And then in real time, we're going to see our kind of lost and lonely guitar player as he's lost in the midst of LA as we see the cars in the background. So a little Lost in America piece we're gonna do. The problem is we don't have a permit to be here. So we're out here on the street. No one will notice that we're here. Nobody will notice. But if they do notice, we'll probably get kicked out. So we're gonna do our dialogue now, and then we're gonna slide our little set in. What we have made is a small window. The slider's gonna go through the window and then reveal what's outside. In LA, they love to yell at you when you're out uh, on the side of the street because I don't know why they love to do that, but they do. So the slider's gonna go through our window and show our guitar player in the little room we built to outside. So we're gonna have to bring our little room up and sit here on the bridge. Hopefully the wind won't blow it over the side and kill somebody, but uh, we're hoping that doesn't happen. So let's get started and see what we can do. So number one, we built a small window out of a set. It's just cobbled together. It was an old window I tore out of my house, built a small set around it, took a little piece we had in the backyard, nailed that on it and it's going to last until tomorrow morning. That's all it has to last, until tomorrow. After that, we don't care. Actually, we don't care if it falls apart in an hour and a half, but it's gonna last until then. So we'll get our window up here and we'll set our slider sliding through it. We're gonna look so obvious here, it's just sad. As the police go by, we'll just wave. Uh, if they come by, I'll tell them it was Clay and that uh, Clay should go to jail for breaking the law like that. But we're just here doing what we're told. All right, so number two is we've got our magic carpet slider. It's a five foot slider, which gives us a great move for this. We can allow the camera to go from inside the room, outside the room. So we'll let the slider become our dolly move with the genie. And then our genie mini is gonna create a little pan. So it'll take the camera out of the room and pan it into the traffic outside. We'll run the move on preview. We'll record it while we do preview. So we know our move, we'll see the motion. We're gonna get shots of clay in that preview mode. Then we'll go to time-lapse mode and let it go through in time-lapse. And then we're going to garbage mat those two together on the edge of the window and combine that into a, a final shot. The predictability of the outcome of your time-lapse is based on three things. Number one is your shutter speed. Number two is your interval, the time between each picture. And number three is how fast is the subject moving. I came out here a couple of days ago and tested the interval on this very spot. I wanted to see what the cars are going to do when we change the interval. For my test, I shot on aperture priority at 4.5. The first time last of my test was at two second intervals, and because the sun was setting, the shutter varied from an 80th of a second at the beginning to a 20th of a second at the end. The cars don't look like they're moving very fast. They look kind of staccato, like a bing, 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 bing. As it got darker, the shutter drug from a quarter of a second to 0.3 seconds. Now the cars are blurring together and that two second interval looks fabulous. So the shutter speed makes a huge difference in the amount of motion blur you're getting on the objects that are moving. It adds to the effects of moving down the street because they blur together, almost like the frames in a video piece. The problem is you can't always shoot on shutter priority and control that aperture as the sun's going down. You can shoot on shutter priority when the sun is up and it's bright. That way you control the shutter, you can make it long, let things blur together. But when the sun's going down, if you shoot on shutter priority, it'll stop your exposure way too soon. You won't get that great light as the sun gets darker and darker. You've got to shoot it on aperture priority. There isn't a formula that will answer every situation. If it's clouds and they're moving towards you, there's no reason for a long shutter speed because they're not moving fast enough for them to even blur so there's just really no reason for it. Here are my camera settings when I'm shooting time lapse. When the sun is setting, I set my white balance to auto and the camera on aperture priority. It's dark enough that the shutter will drag and create nice motion. If I'm shooting time lapse in the daytime, I'm going to use manual on everything. I control the white balance, I control my shutter, I control my aperture. The only time I would change from that is if the sun's coming going in and out because of clouds, then I might choose to go to shutter priority because I want a long shutter or aperture priority because I want a nice depth of field. But usually I'm shooting on manual. 
Uh, in the case of the cars downtown, shutter priority would have been the choice. Put it on one tenth of a second, allow the cars to blur. We already did a test. We realized that anything shorter than a tenth of a second didn't look very good. That longer blur looked a lot nicer. I'm going to set my move up in my Genie. Again, we're dollying with the Genie and panning with the Mini Genie. I already did this at home, kind of tested it, kept that in my preset. I'm going to just simply go to that preset, plug it in, and I'll be able to bring the move in. I can adjust the move by changing the degrees that it's going to move a little bit, but that's my starting point. It gives me a pretty good place to start. It was great shooting downtown here today. We didn't get kicked out. That was one nice thing. I also enjoyed using this SERP equipment. The Genie and Genie Mini work fabulously together on that magic carpet. Just really a nice setup, really easy to use. We didn't even put a dent in that battery by the time we were done shooting. So let's take a look now at our final piece. Keep those cameras rolling, keep on clicking. Giveaways are back here on the Slant Lens. We're starting it off with a 150 to 600 millimeter lens from Tamron. Go to the Slant Lens, check it out.